In this video, we're delving into the Rolex Submariner, a watch that's become a mainstream luxury icon over its 70-year history. Specifically, we're focusing on the modern 126610LV, also known as the Starbucks, or the latest Kermit Submariner date. This model with its striking green bezel and black dial pays homage to the Submariner's rich heritage, dating back to its inception in 1953. Rolex's incorporation of vibrant green elements began with the 2003 release of the 16610LV, nicknamed the Kermit. Subsequently, the 2010 launch of the Hulk 116610LV featured a green sarcrom bezel paired with the Submariner's first green dial. The Hulk was succeeded in 2020 by the re-released Kermit-inspired model, the 126610LV, boasting a green sarcrom bezel, black dial, and Rolex's advanced 3235 caliber with a 70-hour power reserve, all encased in the classic 41mm Submariner format. Now, let's explore whether the modern Rolex Submariner, particularly the 126610LV, lives up to its legendary heritage and the considerable hype surrounding the collection in 2023. Fit and Dimensions Let's talk about why the Submariner is so popular in 2023, starting with how it fits on your wrist. Over the years, this iconic watch has changed its size a bit. When it first came out in 1953, it was 37mm wide. Then in 1959, it grew to a big 40mm. This size stayed the same for a long time. In the mid-2000s, Rolex made a small change by introducing the Super Case, making the watch a bit sturdier and adding a ceramic bezel, which is now a standard feature. In 2020, they surprised everyone by making the Submariner slightly larger, going up to 41mm, and tweaking the shape of the watch lugs. The Starbucks sub we have now measures about 40.5mm in the middle, 41mm on the bezel, 12mm thick with a relatively short lug tip to lug tip of 47.6mm, and about 50mm when you include the end link to end link measurement. The newer Submariner is a bit bigger in some areas compared to the older version, but it still feels great to wear, especially with one of the best bracelets you can get. Bracelet In the world of watches, the space between the 20 and 21mm lugs, the parts where the bracelet attaches to the watch, is crucial, especially compared to the previous edition's 20mm lug spacing. The modern Rolex Oyster bracelet is not just an accessory, it's almost as important as the watch itself. Many other brands have taken inspiration from it, adopting a similar three-link design that now feels like the standard for watch bracelets. But it's not just about looks, the modern Oyster is fantastic in terms of performance. It comes with solid end links, links that can be adjusted with screws, and the Oyster clasp, which is considered one of the best in the watch game. It also features the glide lock system, allowing for a significant 2 centimeters of micro adjustment in 2 millimeters steps. Although the clasp may seem long at almost 46 millimeters, it's put to good use, providing an exceptional range of adjustment. Looking back, Rolex may have had a weak spot in their bracelets in the past, using hollow end links and a folded clasp for a longer time than many other luxury brands and watchmakers. However, Rolex made a change in the early 2000s, switching to solid milled bracelet components. Even though they adopted this idea later than some, when Rolex made the switch, they created something that sets a new standard in its class. Case Architecture Another significant area of change in the Submariner's long history is its case design. The modern version looks quite different from the original, released 7 decades ago. While it still retains the distinctive rotating elapsed time bezel, the original Submariner didn't have crown guards. This protective feature was introduced in 1959, when the watch jumped to 40mm in size. Since then, most of the updates have been relatively subtle, including changes to the crown guard shape and minor adjustments to the lug's contours, such as the introduction of the super case. Nowadays, the Submariner features noticeable crown guards on each side of a large 6.8mm screw-down crown, using Rolex's trip-lock design. The bezel has seen recent innovation, now equipped with a Cerachrom insert, a technology first used in Rolex watches back in 2005 with the GMT Master II family. In the case of this Starbucks model, the bezel's indices are coated with platinum, adding a touch of luxury for devoted vintage Rolex enthusiasts. 
These changes to the case, along with the use of ceramic, mark a notable evolution in the submariner's design. Crystal and Dial Controversies may arise, but some argue that Rolex's changes are crucial for staying relevant in the dynamic world of modern watchmaking. These adjustments cater to a growing audience seeking a bolder, less understated Rolex identity. The flat sapphire crystal within the bezel, featuring a cyclops magnifier and anti-reflective coating, offers a clear view of the iconic submariner dial. While rooted in tradition, the dial introduces modern elements like a glossy black surface, white gold indices, textured details, and an engraved rehout, embodying a contemporary luxury sports watch. Maintaining classic features like Mercedes hands and geometric indices, the dial prioritizes excellent legibility. Chromolite luminescence, despite departing from tool-oriented origins, preserves utility elements with a crown at 12 and its counterpart at the bottom. The 32-35 caliber, introduced in 2015 and incorporated into the Submariner in 2020, powers the watch with a 70-hour power reserve. Hidden behind a closed case back, the caliber features Rolex's Chronergy escapement and Paracrom balance spring to enhance efficiency and resist magnetic interference. Though Rolex movements lack extravagant finishing, they exhibit reliable performance and meet robust technical standards, with a final quoted accuracy of negative 2 to plus 2 seconds per day. Closing thoughts and should you buy this watch? Now, let's wrap up with some final thoughts on the Rolex Submariner date, particularly the 126610 LV and the broader modern Submariner range. Whatever your opinions on Rolex may be, it's undeniable that at retail pricing, Rolex produces some of the best watches globally. While Rolex watches may not be everyone's cup of tea, given their current dominance in the industry and their largest ever scale, it's safe to say that many appreciate what Rolex brings to the table. In my view, there is no luxury watch as instantly recognizable as a Rolex Submariner. It's an icon. It fits well on various wrists, boasts top-notch quality control, exceptional case finishing, a leading class bracelet, and highly dependable movements. The design is timeless, but are there any downsides? Ironically, some of the drawbacks come from the watch's own success. For those experiencing Rolex fatigue, the ubiquity of the Submariner across various watch designs, from attainable brands to micro brands and other luxury names, might make it lose some of its charm. Moreover, there's the hype surrounding the brand, a topic I won't delve into further, having discussed it extensively before. However, the Rolex Submariner at its retail price is undeniably one of the best watches you can purchase. The answer is a definite yes, yet I would argue that the Rolex Submariner today isn't the same as it was in the past. While it may look and wear similarly, the underlying philosophy has shifted to Rolex's current identity as a leading luxury watch producer. Whether this shift is positive or negative is subjective, and consumers must decide where they stand on this reality. Nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that this watch deserves its place in the luxury watchmaking pantheon. Alright folks, that's my perspective on the current generation Rolex Submariner and some of my musings. I'm eager to hear your thoughts. I know this watch is widely known, so what's your take on the modern Rolex Submariner collection overall? Share your comments below. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us at Venti Chic. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. Subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. See you in our next video.